Now we are ready to plot some good looking pictures of hydrogen atom wave functions that is orbitals. We are used to drawing s orbitals uh, like spheres, but what we will see today is that actually s orbitals look like this. How? Let us see. This is what we have done so far. We have written down the hydrogen atom Schrodinger equation in spherical polar coordinates and we have been able to separate the equation into three different parts. The radial equation, the theta equation and the phi equation. The solution of phi equation gave us a actually 1 by root 2 pi e to the power i m phi from where we got the magnetic quantum number 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 so on and so forth. And from the theta dependent part we got the secondary quantum number 0 1 2 3 so on and so forth. Also we have seen why it is that magnitude of m has to be lesser than or equal to L. We have learned how that comes. That comes from the requirement of z component of angular momentum never being greater than the total angular momentum. Now uh, we have not solved the r and th theta dependent parts, but we have told you what the wave functions look like. The theta dependent wave function is essentially a polynomial in cos theta. This is called a legendary polynomial and the r dependent part essentially is a constant multiplied by r to the power l e to the power minus z r by n 0 multiplied by a Lagrangian function which is a polynomial. And when we uh, look at the solutions of radial part, we have not done it in detail, we have just told you the final results. We get the principal quantum number n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so, forth, so on and so forth. We also get to learn that L less than n. Now what is the information about the molecule that we uh, about the atom that we get uh, from these three different parts? From the radial part we get to know the energy. And the expression for energy is the same as what you get from Bohr theory minus 13.6 electron volt by n square. From the angular part, the theta part, we get to know the total angular momentum which is h cross multiplied by root over l into l plus 1. And from the phi dependent part, we get the z component of angular momentum mh cross and once again that is why mod m has to be less than or equal to l. Now what we often do is that we uh, take the angular part together and we write this kind of an expression. This is called spherical harmonics and that turns out to be your uh, the theta part multiplied by the phi part. So what we will do is we will look at radial and angular part separately. We have already shown you the radial functions of hydrogen atom and we have reminded you that number of radial nodes is n minus l minus 1. We, re we also reminded ourselves that we have to talk about probability and not probability density. So R square capital R square small r square dr essentially is radial probability distribution function. For s orbital this becomes 4 pi r square. It is not very difficult to understand I hope. So uh, taking into account volume element there is some radius non-zero radius where radial distribution function undergoes a, a maximum. And we have briefly said that you can figure out the most probable value of radius and average value of radius and they are usually not the same. Now uh, let us try plotting the orbitals in this kind of 3D pictures. So in these three dimensions what is it? Y axis is the orbital, the other two axes can be x and y, y and z, uh, x and z whatever we require. So see actually this is a 4 dimensional picture. Psi is the fourth dimension. The spatial dimensions are r theta phi or x y z whatever you want. But psi is the fourth dimension. How will I draw a four dimensional picture? I cannot. So I can only draw three dimensional sections and then we uh, make contour plots of them. So let us take the simplest case scenario. Uh, one is orbital where the radial part is the only part that is there in the wave function. Exponential decay as we said. Now when I plot it against r, remember if this is x and this is y, what is r? r square is equal to x square plus y square, is not it? r is essentially equal to square root of x square plus y square just like that. So for any value of x and y you have a value of r. So this exponential decay that we draw 
uh, we can keep on changing x and y and uh, what we will generate is this kind of a conical shape alright. So, what you see here is uh, sort of a 3 dimensional picture and you can see these lines here these lines join all points with the same value of psi you might remember that we had encountered these when talking about 2D and 3D box. Now if I look down from the top what will I see I will only see these lines. So this is a projection of this 3 dimensional uh, object in 2 dimensional plane. So these lines essentially join the all the points having same psi these are called contour diagrams contour diagrams. For one is orbital of course the uh, contours are all circular and one more thing to notice see here the spacing between contours is large here the spacing between contours is small why because uh, the slope is more initially it is not a straight line right slope is more initially and gradually it falls off what is the meaning of slope if I draw like this this I called horizontal equivalent and here now I am using language that is used in your uh, survey maps and this is called vertical interval but vi means vertical interval he is horizontal equivalent. So uh, slope is vi divided by he what will happen if uh, slope is more then for same he vi will be more something like this right or I can draw like this I will take the same vertical interval like this. So you see when slope is more then these two points are close when slope is less these two points are far apart. So wherever slope is less contour lines are far apart wherever slope is more contour lines are close together. This is your 1s 3D picture as well as contour diagram. What about 2s? 2s has uh, remember r to the power l multiplied by that Lagrange function l here is 0 so r to the power 0. So r to the power 0 is essentially 1 no problem with that but the uh, Laguerre polynomial not Lagrange function Laguerre function is 2 minus zr by a where a is Bohr radius where does the radial node occur then r equal to 2a by z that is why the function falls off becomes 0 at r equal to 2a by z changes sign so this is a nodal point remember node is a point where a wave function goes through 0 and changes sign if it does not change sign then it is not a node then again it increases and becomes 0 asymptotically okay. This is something that I plotted myself so uh, do not take this number seriously uh, these numbers are just relative and I encourage you to plot yourself alright. So this is your 2s orbital how does it look if I try to make a similar 3 dimensional picture all I have to do is I have to turn it around by 360 degrees with respect to the psi axis this is what I get okay. Now see this is the diagram. Uh, that you get for 2s orbital initially very high value it falls crosses 0 and becomes negative do you see the basin here this is the negative basin and then it slowly recovers and becomes 0 uh, at infinite uh, value of small r. This these are the contour diagrams I have just taken this and turned it around I have used graphite to plot this in a uh, uh, MacBook, so it is very easy to do these things there you can use whatever graph plotting software that you want. Turn around these are the contours and once again see these lines are far apart these lines keep on getting closer and closer and closer neglect this arrowhead this is just an artifact from the program. I will show you another view this is the top view well this is a side view this is the top view this is the bottom view if you look from the bottom you see this hole where does this hole come from well wave function has started from a certain value so at r equal to 0 value is very positive but the minimum value is actually negative that is what is determined by this rim this is the contour line where you have negative and do you see the radial node in the contour diagram this whitish circle that you see that is your radial node. So this is how orbitals are usually depicted orbital remember is a one electron wave function and uh, of course if I ask you to just draw it on uh, plain paper this is how you can draw it how do you show sign here you either write explicitly or use different colors for different signs all right this is another way in which orbitals are often depicted lots of dots with different color color denotes uh, sign and density of dots denotes probability so the way this is done is that uh, you plot uh, more dots where the probability density is more and when you look at the entire picture 
you get the probability distribution. Another way of drawing it this Pac-Man kind of figure I do not know what these diagrams are called uh, these diagrams are all drawn by my senior colleague Professor Vayu Shashidhar you see his name here. So, this is another way of drawing it you cut a section of the orbital you can show there is one sign outside one sign inside very nice depictions. Thea's orbital as we said has a polynomial of second order. So, naturally 2 roots so in two, for 2 values of r it becomes 0 and remember these are uh, Laguerre functions and property of Laguerre functions dictates that the roots are both real. Okay. Now uh, 2 nodes so what will it look like uh, I do not have the 3D picture here but the scatter plot looks like this you can see there are 3 different regions you can try to make the 3D plot yourself. Okay. Now another thing that I want to stress even though we have said earlier see this here is the 3S orbital that we have plotted the outer most slope is the smallest when I multiply by small r r square by ca r square capital R square is your probability density actually you have to multiply it by 4 pi. Now see what has happened since you have multiplied by r square the outermost lobe which was the smallest has actually become the largest. So, where is the probability of finding 3s orbital uh, 3s electron mode outside in this major lobe. Okay. So, uh, these are uh, probability distribution function plots. Now, let us talk about p orbitals and d orbitals. So, this diagram that you see is actually of 3p orbital as we are going to uh, arrive at slowly. But first let us talk about 2p orbitals. We will start with the simplest one 2pz orbital. Here is the radial part. Radial part C. Now, this time we have r by a multiplied by e to the power minus zr by 2a. r is an increasing function e to the power minus zr by 2a is a decreasing function. Multiply them together you get a maximum. And where does this maximum occur you can differentiate equal to 0 equate to 0 you can find out where the maximum uh, radial uh, maximum of the radial part of the wave function occurs. Remember the position of maximum of the radial part of the wave function will not be the same as the position of the maximum of r square multiplied by capital R square. I encourage you to work out both and see for yourself whether it is same or whether they are different. Okay. This is the radial part what about the angular part angular part has cos theta. Now, cos theta remember is z by r. So, I instead of cos theta I can just write z and I can write z by r. So, r this r and that r will cancel will be left with e to the power minus z r by 2a multiplied by uh, z right interesting right that is why it is called a 2 pz orbital. So, now see if I, I know how to get uh, radial nodes already equate the radial part to 0. If I equate the angular part to 0 cos theta equal to 0 what is that cos theta equal to 0 is z equal to 0 that is the x z x y plane. So, x y plane turns out to be an angular node of the 2 pz orbital. Okay. So, that is why the 3 d picture turns out to be like this you start from 0 you get a positive going function which then again decays to 0 negative going function that again decays to 0. But why is it positive why is it negative because see this y z plane must be uh, sorry z x uh, what am I saying x y plane must be a node I am showing you the uh, x z plane here. So, in this projection remember here uh, the third axis is wave function. So, if third axis is wave function where are you going to get this uh, node here it will be z equal to 0 this line. Okay. So, this is the meaning so these are the two lobes. Now, if you look down from the top what will you see the contour diagram will look like this remember the 2 lobes of p orbital these are your 2 lobes of 2 p orbital. When we go to 3 p orbital we will see the situation becomes even more interesting. So, this is what it is 1 plus lobe 1 minus lobe what is plus what is minus uh, electrons do not become positively charged when they go to the plus lobe sign of the wave function is positive sign of the wave function is negative in the negative lobe. Okay. So, plus and minus on the lobes denote the sign of the wave function and these lobes arise out of angular part they are of different signs because the angular plane the, the angular node is essentially the uh, y x y plane the angular node essentially is x y plane okay. and these are the constant probability surface how do you plot them you decide what uh, size size star you want for join all the points having that same size size star now this is 3d space you join all the uh, so for some x y z value 
I know that psi psi star is 0 0.002 let us say. I join all those points and then I get this kind of a uh, shape. Now I know where psi is plus where psi is minus so I can use different color or write plus or minus. Then what I do is I work out the volume inside this. The volume inside that will be probability of finding the electron within that constant probability surface. Then uh, that is how you generate these uh, pictures of probability distribution and generally people confuse that with orbitals. But hopefully after today we will never confuse, we will remember that orbitals are wave function and these shapes of uh, probability distribution are generated using the functional forms of the orbitals but not neglecting the uh, spherical uh, not detecting the uh, volume element as well. Great. Now, now we come to an interesting situation 2pz is something we could plot very easily. What about uh, this m equal to plus 1 m equal to minus 1? See here phi part was 1 because m equal to 0 phi part is 1 so it is a real orbital. However, for m equal to plus 1 and minus 1 we have orbitals that are imaginary and we cannot draw them in real space. Um, you can actually do whatever you want to do with them but you cannot plot them and in chemistry we like to plot things it is easier to understand. So, what we do is we remember a theorem. What is a theorem? That uh, we remember a theorem that the uh, quantum mechanical operators are linear. So, if quantum mechanical operators are linear then uh, if I take a linear combination of wave functions then what happens? I have poor memory so I do not remember whether I worked this out earlier in any case we will do it once but I will write and I will uh, delete also. So, see take some any operator a hat let us say it operates on uh, c 1 phi 1 plus c 2 phi 2 where phi 1 and phi 2 are wave functions c 1 c 2 are coefficients and let us say also I think we did it that a hat operates on phi 1 to give me a 1 phi 1 a 2 a hat operates on phi 2 to give me a 2 phi 2 ok. So, now what is this since it is a linear operator I can write it as c 1 multiplied by a hat phi 1 plus c 2 multiplied by a hat phi 2. What is a 1 phi 1 we know what is a 2 phi 2 we know as well. So, I will write c 1 a 1 phi 1 plus c 2 a 2 phi 2. Is this an eigenvalue equation? In the general case no. In a special case where a 1 is equal to a 2 that is same eigenvalues let us say both are equal to a then I can take it out right. I can write a multiplied by c 1 phi 1 plus c 2 phi 2 ok. Now see look at this I uh, will call them p plus p minus orbital. They are uh, Eigen functions of Hamiltonian operator and they are Eigen functions with the same Eigen value right. Remember uh, energy depends only on n only on the radial part. So, there is no problem I can take linear combination and whatever linear combination I take will have the same energy as these orbitals. So, I take two linear combinations first I add them what happens when I add e to the power i phi and e to the power minus i phi remember e to the power i phi is cos uh, phi plus i sin phi and e to the power minus i phi is cos phi minus sin i sin phi ok. So, when we add that this is what happens you are left with cos phi this i sin phi terms cancel each other. So, I got sin theta cos phi what happens uh, what is that that is actually psi 2 p x why because remember r sin theta cos phi is x. So, this 2 p x orbital now behaves like your p z orbital the only difference is for 2 p x orbital the uh, angular node is the y z plane ok nice. What, what happens if you take a uh, minus combination the only difference here is that now the cos terms will vanish cos phi terms and sin phi terms will be there they have i in their coefficient. So, you have to divide by i also this is root 2 multiplied by i this is not root over i please do not uh, this is not very clear i multiplied by root 2 that is what it is. So, then I get sin theta sin phi 
r sin theta sin phi is y remember. So, this is your familiar psi 2 py orbitals. So, remember that for 2 p x and 2 p y for p x and p y orbitals m values are not defined. We generate them by taking linear combinations of m equal to plus 1 and m equal to minus 1 orbitals. So, if m value is not defined what is not defined is the z component of angular momentum right. So, uh, remember the particle in a box wave function it was a linear sum of uh, a wave function that denoted the linear uh, motion in plus x direction and another one that denoted linear motion in minus x direction it is sort of like that ok plus m h cross and minus m h cross they are combined. So, z component of angular momentum is indeterminate if you perform a measurement then you will see either z equal to plus 1 or z equal to minus 1 ok. But p x and p y orbitals uh, they are not Eigen functions of the L z operator they are Eigen functions of your uh, energy Hamiltonian operator and also angular momentum operator L square ok. Let us quickly talk about 3 p z in 3 p z the complicating factor is a radial node you have 6 minus z r by a in the uh, radial part. So, what happens if I equate that to 0 that gives me a radial node that was not there for 2 p orbitals. So, now uh, I will just show you how to draw an orbital if I give you the function the first thing to do is to draw the nodes this radial node is going to be a circle in this section and angular node is going to be a line. Okay. Now, what I do is I draw any one of the lobes and you call it either plus or minus does not matter. So, what it means is that if you cross the node if you cross this node sign will change. So, if this is plus we will get minus if you cross this node then also sign will change. So, if this is plus it will become minus and once again the same thing will happen when you cross this node. So, if this was plus now this is minus this is going to be plus and this is going to be minus. So, this is the contour diagram of 3 p z orbital remember contour diagram of 2 p z and 3 p z orbitals have this difference because of the radial node ok. Let me show you the 3 d picture nice and here you can see the contours as well. So, you see you have a big hill a big trough followed by a small trough and a small hill in fact to get this diagram is very difficult these are so small but multiply them by r square we will take square of this and multiply them by r square this is going to blow up ok. Then similarly you can plot this 3 p z orbitals let us talk about d orbitals 3 d x square minus y square orbital this here is the uh, wave function it has sin square theta cos 2 phi. How do I write cos 2 phi in terms of uh, sin phi and cos phi I hope that is not very difficult for us uh, when we do that we will see that. Uh, this sin square theta cos 2 phi becomes x square minus y square by r square and when you equate that to 0 you get the angular node x equal to plus minus y ok. These are the angular nodes. Now, we can draw the lobes let us say this is minus then this will be plus this will be minus this will be plus. What about d x y for d x y the angular part of the wave function is sin square theta sin 2 phi that turns out to be x y by r square ok. What is sin 2 phi 2 sin phi cos phi right. So, 1 sin phi gets multiplied by sin theta and the other sin theta multi gets multiplied by cos phi that is how you get x y ok. Angular nodes become x y equal to 0 that is x equal to 0 y equal to 0 that is how you get these slopes. Similarly, for 3 d z square no one more thing see remember this 3 d x y th y z z x x square minus y square these are actually obtained by taking linear combinations one set is obtained by taking linear combinations of m equal to plus 1 m equal to minus 1 orbitals and the other one is generated by taking linear combinations of uh, m equal to plus 2 and m equal to minus 2 orbitals which gives you which I leave that for you to figure out. Last orbital that I want to talk about is your 3 d z square my favorite orbital because the angular part is 3 cos square theta minus 1. In fact, if you equate this to 0 you will get theta equal to cos inverse 1 by root 3 which comes out to be 54.7 degrees this is called magic angle and this quantity keeps on coming back to haunt us in many many different areas. But we will not talk about that anymore 
what I want to say is that uh, 54.7 degrees is not the only solution. There is another solution and that solution is I will be lazy and I will say 180 degrees minus 54.7 degrees. So, remember uh, this is one node conical nodes here, this is another node and since the angle is 54.7 degrees more than 45 degrees that is why one lobe is bigger the other lobe is smaller and since it is conical this one turns out to be when you just turn it around the smaller lobe turns out to be a belt, but this here is really the 3D picture. So, uh, plus plus minus minus ok this is what 3D z square orbital is ok. You can generate surface of constant probability and then you get this familiar picture. Now, you can go on and draw the nodes here you are going to get 2 conical nodes. Similarly, we are not going to talk about f orbitals, but I just show you the constant probability surfaces of the f 0 orbital and these are the nodal surfaces. This, uh, so, this is what we wanted to say about hydrogen atom wave functions that are orbitals. Now, the question is this hydrogen has only one electron. So, why do we need s p d a f so many orbitals n equal to 1 to 3? Because first of all uh, we want to access excited states, we want to talk about spectra, we want to talk about many electron atoms. We are going to see how these orbitals are used to uh, work out wave functions for a simple molecule, molecular ion if you call it that is H 2 plus they are called molecular orbitals.